Venus Friday. So let's talk about what's happening with Venus, our divine feminine planet, and then our divine feminine energy this week, as well as some other astrological happenings. But this is a big week in the Venus cycle, right? So Venus is in the underworld, meaning she's traveling on the other side of the sun from us. And she's going to come into her exact conjunction, her exact alignment meeting on the other side of the sun. So they come into, we're all coming into one line. So imagine I've got my little planet balls here. Imagine you are the earth and here is the sun. And now Venus is traveling behind the sun, right? from our view, and they're going to come into this exact alignment, right? Hidden behind the sun, this straight line between the three of us, right? This geometrical alignment of, um, I think of it as like a piercing kind of energy of connection that comes into play. So starting today, Venus and the sun come within one degree of each other. So here's another way you can kind of look at it. Like if here, I have the earth somewhere, but I don't know where the ball, the other balls are. I just grabbed these two. So imagine my hand is the earth. We're looking out at the sun and then Venus is in that alignment. So we're in this straight line. Okay. So starting, right. And again, remember, these are huge astrological, I mean, huge solar system celestial bodies right the sun is huge venus is huge we're huge so they come into that alignment slowly and they come out of that alignment slowly as well right so this conjunction we come within one degree venus and the sun are in one degree of each other starting today and they stay within one degree of each other all the way through till June 8th, right? So we'll talk more about this next week as well. But the exact conjunction, like to the minute, the degree, all of that happens on June 4th, on Tuesday. Okay, so we're going to talk about this more. But first, let's look at Stellarium, our amazing free astronomy software that I'm always like talking about so we can visualize and see what's happening in the sky. Okay, so we're going to start there. So Venus and the sun come into this one degree alignment here today on Friday. And you can see, right, they're so overlapped that you can't even see like both words right there. And But before I zero in, I just want to look at this, right? So here we are facing the south, right? I got a little feedback recently of like, oh, it can be kind of confusing what I'm looking at. And I haven't like clarified because I'm so used to looking at Solarium and all of that. So I want to kind of orient us. So here we are looking south, right? So here is the east point. Here's where the sun is rising. Here's where the sun is setting this western-ish point, right? The sun kind of moves north and south of east and west throughout the year from the December solstice to the June solstice and back again. So we're kind of, here we are. Anyways, I don't want to get too far down that wormhole, but we're looking south. So when you were to walk outside during the day, the direction that you look to see the sun in the Northern hemisphere is looking at the south. So for those of you that are in the Southern hemisphere, this image, you'd be looking at the north, right? That's where the sun tracks through the sky is on the northern side. And for us in the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, sorry, I don't want to like get to make that too confusing. We look to the south. So here we are facing south. This is about the time of where I am right now in the late in the morning. And there is the sun with Venus, right? So if I turn the sun on... We can't see Venus anything. You can still see the moon, right? It's in its waning last quarter moon, right? Moving towards the sun for the new moon. All right, I'm gonna turn the sun back off. And here we can see, right? We have the sun, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Uranus, right? All these celestial bodies are so close together. And so if you follow any like astronomy stuff, you'll see that coming next week on um, 
what is the date on, is it uh, on Monday, right? The third. So I'm looking at my calendars to make sure I don't steer you wrong. You're going to see all these planetary alignments in the morning sky ahead of the sunrise. So that would be a cool if you're an astronomy buff like me to go out and check that out on Tuesday morning, probably Wednesday morning as well, which will be that conjunction. So when you're outside looking at the sun, just remember like all oh, these planetary bodies are close by. Venus and the sun are in this like exact alignment, right? So just know Venus is there. And so when Venus passes on the other side of the sun and comes into that straight line, exact alignment, which like we're there people, right? It's within one degree now. It's going to be within one degree for nearly eight days, which is a very sacred number for the Venus cycle. So that's extra cool as well that the sun and Venus are right there. And so when that alignment occurs, we say Venus or any other planet, but right now we're talking about Venus and this is Venus Fridays and we talk about the divine feminine and that's my passion, uh, is in the heart of the sun, in the heart of spirit, source energy, great mystery, the goddess, whatever kind of like terminology you like to use for that, like one force, Venus is in alignment with that, right? Because the sun represents that energy, that vital force, our life force energy, and Venus is getting this infusion. So our divine feminine is getting this massive infusion right now in the heart of, as Daniel Giamario from the Shamanic Astrology School, where I studied originally, likes to talk about great mystery, right? The Venus is coming into the heart of great mystery. So it's this amazing time to like tune in to feel that infusion of energy, life force into our divine feminine expression within ourselves, where we're going in the world, all of that. So this is a big deal this week in the Venus cycle, right? Venus is in the underworld going undergoing this alchemical transformation and this communication and connection and communion with the sun, source, spirit, life force, energy until July when she'll rise into the evening sky, into her evening star phase, where we'll see her after the sunset in the west in the evening sky, right? So this is such a beautiful time to just keep feeling that infusion of energy and connection into our divine feminine in this deeply spiritual spirit infused goddess infused time so while you're out there with the sun checking out venus feeling into that alignment just breathe into it right like embody it feel the energy that your divine feminine is getting this infusion from maybe you'll have insights maybe you'll get messages maybe you'll have sensations sounds colors like anything that comes through to you from this beautiful geometric alignment over these eight days and the exact alignment on tuesday June to yeah, Tuesday, June 4th, right? Okay, so let's zoom in. So one thing I'm going to say before, I mean, I've already gone into that a lot. On Monday, Mercury here is going to move into Gemini. So I'm going to slide this down a little bit. So it's in our screen. There's the horizon. We've just warped it. We're going to zoom in. For those of you that are into astrology, this line of where the meridian, this red line meets the yellow line here, that's your midheaven, right? That's the midheaven, the highest place that the planets reach. It's where they culminate on the each day. You can see here this morning when we're looking at this that Mars has already passed that point. Uranus and Mercury and Jupiter, they're all coming towards that point. So Jupiter just moved into Gemini. When planets move into Gemini, they're aligned with the Pleiades in our current lifetime, the seven sisters. So when a planet enters Jupiter, I mean, enters Gemini, 
it connects into that powerful alchemical astrological astronomical force of the seven sisters the divine feminine here in this bull constellation right i say this before i'll say it again but the tropical astrology signs are based on the seasons they're not the same thing as the constellation so gemini starts here with the pleiades and moves across right so we see the sun and venus are here they're going to be coming between the horns of the bull here they essentially are there and that's like if you look at um isis right she's the goddess that has the horns of the bull with the sun disc between them right sometimes sekhmet will have that as well right so these are like powerful like mythological ancient times of connection and empowerment right so here we have this exact alignment happening right here think of in isis's crown sekhmet's crown right there's other goddesses as well but it's like that's this you know solar power time right so there's a lot happening here so it's a great time to again just kind of feel into it feel that empowerment, that juice, that infusion of energy coming through right now. So Mercury is going to move into Gemini on Monday. So it's going to come into this alignment with the Pleiades, the seven sisters, our mental consciousness planet, kind of our brain planet moves into Gemini, our very mental sign, right? So there's going to be a lot of mental consciousness awareness kind of activity along with Jupiter's there for the next year ish and so that's an expansion of this Jupiter type I mean um, Gemini energy as well as this Venus Sun conjunction is happening in Gemini here between the horns of the bull right so that's a lot align with Aldebaran, a royal star, the eye of the bull, right? There's just layers upon layers of um, of energy coming into this alignment. So then on Tuesday, I'll just advance our date here one more day. Uh, wait, so that was, here's the third. Here is when Mercury moves into Gemini. See it there aligned. It's going to come and meet up with Jupiter on the 4th, right? There it is on the day of the exact conjunction. And here is the Sun and Venus exactly in this horns of the bull constellation, right? So there's a lot, a lot happening in Gemini, that curious sign, you know, uh, letting our curiosity run, learning, you may be kind of flittering around between like different ideas and there's an excitement, there's an energy, there's a socialness to Gemini. So Gemini is really activated, the divine feminine is really activated, the sun, Mercury, Jupiter, just adding more to it. And here we see the moon is coming soon. And we'll be entering Gemini and then this new moon coming next week, which we'll talk about next week, is going to come right into that alignment with the sun and Venus as well, while they're still within that one degree. So if I haven't emphasized it enough, there is a lot happening over these couple of weeks that's very powerful around Gemini our divine feminine, the infusion of energy, greater empowerment, the transformation around the feminine, right? We're living in a time when the feminine is coming back into her own power slowly over time. And the masculine is coming into more balance with the feminine, right? So we see swings, that'll be part of the pendulum, like trying to find the middle. And as the feminine energy is rising, we can see a lot of reaction to the changing energy around the masculine. So some people are kind of like doubling down and there's a grip around it happening, but it's happening, right? The balance will come. We're living in a time where we're helping to bring that harmony back into uh, 
greater alignment. So this conjunction happening is a huge part of that, right? It's another like another layer or level of that empowerment around the divine feminine. So tuning into your feminine side, what does it mean for you? What does it mean when the Venus and the feminine is in Gemini, that more kind of trickster, playful kind of energy that really wants us to get out of our boxes, right? The boxes that hold us in this patriarchal mindset, right? Which like we can all want to be moving out of that and letting go of it, but there's a whole like psychological like unwinding that has to occur, right? All the time I'm like, oh, there I go again, just like supporting that structure that I don't want to be supported because we've all been raised in that. No matter how we identify, that's the mindset we've been raised in. So it's constantly looking at that, pushing back against it. Why am I thinking this? What is this really about? Where does this thought come from? That kind of energy so that I can then put my energy, my awareness, my consciousness towards what I want to be creating. And while Venus is moving through the underworld, hidden in the light of the sun, and we can't see her in the sky, this is a beautiful time to be leaning into these themes and this transformation. Like personally, what can I look at and address and focus on transforming during this time that supports greater empowerment of myself, my feminine side, and the feminine in general. And this alignment coming on Tuesday is another, like, is like a highlight of this underworld time from April until July. It's kind of like comes to this culmination on Tuesday of what do we want to be seeding with that? What kind of messages do are coming to us? What kind of infusion of energy are we receiving from the sun and this alignment between the earth, the sun, and Venus on Tuesday? And really over this eight days that's starting today, Friday, May 31st, what happens within that? What am I getting within that? What do I want to be seeding? What do I want to have my intention be? What do I want to be focusing on empowering as I come out the other side and we move into Venus in the evening star time and we start to reclaim our empowerment at each of the chakras following the most ancient story we have written down. It's the first written stories that we have are about Inanna, queen of heaven and earth, which is really Venus. It's a whole cosmological telling of the Venus cycle. And we reach the evening star time where she comes back out of the underworld, reclaiming her power through these seven gates, the chakras, as we move into the latter part of the Venus cycle. So I hope I have uh, impressed upon you enough, like all of the empowerment that's happening here, right? So let's just continue and then we'll wind things up, right? So here we have the Venus sun exact conjunction between the horns of the bull in the heart of great mystery. We have Jupiter and Mercury in their conjunction as well on this day. And then here, let's go to Wednesday. Now the moon has come into alignment with Mercury. Mercury's moved on a little from Jupiter, right? It moves much faster. Jupiter moves more slowly. And then we have finally on Thursday, the new moon in Gemini. So here's the moon. It happens um, a little earlier in the morning than I am showing here. So you can see it's just come past, but on this day, that's when it comes into this alignment with this Venus sun conjunction. So now the moon, which is like a big activator, right? Whatever it touches, it's like um, there's an additional infusion. If the sun is spirit, the moon is soul. You can look at it from that perspective. They come into this cosmic alignment for the new moon, the start of the new moon cycle, right? So there's so many things that we are seeding and infusing over this week, right? It's so, it's just such a powerful time. I just, I don't know how else to like say it and emphasize it, but so the moon coming in there. So it's like, what seeds do you want to be planting and growing around the feminine, 
And then what seeds do you want? What part of that do you want to take and kind of seed for the one month, right? So the moon cycle, we're always coming back to, it lasts for a month. So it's a great time to kind of like a monthly check-in, tune in, like, what do I want to be co-creating? Where am I trying to go in my life? What do I want to be doing? And it's in this nice, like one month chunk, which is really accessible to set a goal, set an intention and be able to follow through and come to some kind of fruition with that. So I'm really a fan of setting like really tangible, practical goals for the new moon, as opposed to like, um, something that's like more esoteric, like I want to create more joy in my life. Well, what's it, something that creates more joy in your life? Is it going and doing a meditation each day? Is it going for a walk? Is it writing your gratitude list? Then that's the goal that you want to set for the moon cycle, right? So that it's like, you can look at it at the end of the month and go, did I meditate most days? Did I write a gratitude um, list most days, et cetera, right? As opposed to, did I create more joy for myself over the past month? That can be like harder to kind of like gauge and understand. So I love using the new moon and the moon cycle as a time to set what some people will call like SMART goals, which I think are, I can't remember what the ac acronym stands, but something like measurable, right? Something that's like really tangible and you can see like, did I do it? Did I not do it? But it's something that's helping to support that overall larger goals that you have for your life, those more esoteric type of goals, right? So, okay, I have like talked about this, belabored the point, but I'll just finish on saying this is all happening in Gemini, right? So Gemini is a playful, youthful energy. It's an energy that's serving spirit. So it's play for the sake of play, but it has this much larger, more spiritual intention and focus. And it's to help us like learn and grow and be curious and expand and check things out and um, have that childlike wonder and curiosity and move beyond like polarity and the differences and the difficulties and just really at the heart of it is like get out of our box, right? That expansiveness that blows open the boxes so that we can step into more of our power and take away like limitations that we impose upon ourselves. So that's the energy that's really infused with this specific meeting of the divine feminine Venus with the sun, source, spirit, the goddess, great mystery energy meeting in the heart of that from this geometric alignment of all of us coming together and then the moon coming through right into that place in that moment as well as it will move here through the horns of the bull as well. So it's a big month. I mean, a big week in the Venus cycle, a big week in our divine feminine expression, the divine feminine in the world and the connection into the goddess with spirit, source, soul. All of this is alive this week expanded with Jupiter, Mercury there as well, as well as being able to see all of these planets gathered in the early morning sky ahead of the sunrise this week as well. So blessings, lots of Venus light and love to you. And thanks for being with me. See you next week.